spot. Nice. This is, hey, Eric, you're the lead ambassador here. I don't want to overstep your ground. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> All right, so now, before I can introduce Michael, we have a little tradition here at the GNA. Right. And that tradition, Michael, is I need you to stand up. I need you to go like way over there. And then that, uh, I'll call you back when I'm ready. <laughs> I hope I remember to calm down. <laughs> Anyways, hey, let me know how the weather is over there, too. <laughs> so, I know you all came to hear me speak today. Yeah. 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 You know, they're, they're being used to me already. I'm going to come up with some new information. You have to come up with some new material, too. You say the same thing every week. I've been too busy. I haven't done it. My secretary hasn't done it for me. So, we have another great presentation here at San Bruno. And uh, this guy, I met him a few weeks ago now, and he's been coming every meeting he's here. Every meeting he's in San Jose. He's a great guy. Sometimes you hear me call him Leo, just because that's what I called him when I first met him. So it's like an inside joke now. <laughs> but he, his company is Beauty by Leo. He's helping his wife out with it. Ah, he's a great guy, and today's speaker, can everyone see the screen okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to be a key thing because he's going to use the screen. So at this time, I want everybody to stand up, because I'm not going to introduce them until we all stand up. I, sometimes I get my way, sometimes I don't. Thank you for just allowing me to have my way. So at this time, I want you to all be really, really loud for today's speaker, Michael Hill! Yeah. Wow! <laughs> Eric! With a K. Eric with a K, that's right. Eric with a K, thank you. Well, I can unveil everything now. Excuse me a minute. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, believe me, I've done it without it. Um, first thing first, I want to say thank you. A special thank you, because later on, I probably won't have the chance, but Eric, Elias, Ron, and thank you for letting me do this. I really appreciate it. This is a tremendous um, opportunity to present a passion of mine, which is giving you guys the ability to understand what's available to you to protect your assets. assets. Yeah, good. Uh, and now, guess what? It's so dark I can't read. <laughs> you want me to turn the light on? No, 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 I'm good. I'm just having some fun. Um, Madonna, would you hit the enter button? Because I don't have a clicker. Oh, okay. Um, oh, you need a designated uh, clicker. Paul, he, he was going to be my clicker, but he was he was talking to Sandy and got lost. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that usual, Mike? Pay yeah. attention. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about some asset protection um, ideas, concepts. You already hit the button? <laughs> you are so good. I have not told you to I am not an attorney. I want everybody to know that. I am not an attorney. These things I'm presenting to you are concepts. These are based in, in law that's provided by the United States government for everybody to utilize. These are entities that are structured by the United States uh, IRS and the United States courts and laws so that you have the opportunity to use them. I talk really fast. However, I will never discourage anyone I'm not sure what that word is. Fro. Fro. an attorney. Okay? So, for your information, if you decide to, uh, to please, one of the things I like to, 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 to let people know is that I, I know a lot of you, how many are seminar junkies? Only one. How many have been to a seminar? Oh. <laughs> Crowd. <laughs> now what was my point? <laughs> we all been to seminars. We all look at their speakers as something that are authoritative. However, what I want to keep you guys in mind is that you bring to the bring to you the, bring to the forefront of your mind the fact that they are authoritative, but they are not the absolute authority. 
So always question what you hear. Please check it out. Don't trust me. Trust what the government says. Trust what the other people say. Trust what... Well, not, not, trust, trust what's available to you from the government. Okay? Thank you for clarifying. You clear, trust what the government says. Yeah. If that was the case, we would not be in the recession, right? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Job what did I say? Okay. <laughs> okay, so I did my disclaimer. I'll let you guys know. Please take notes. There is a lot of information that's going to be thrown at you today. And you're going to come up with some questions. I will not take questions during this presentation. I will take questions after the presentation. Because there's just too much to go through to give you an understanding of what these concepts are and what they're about. So please just hold your questions up. Write them down. Do not forget about them. Um, we're going to go on to, oh, just for your information. The husband goes to his wife and says, how many great men do you think there are in the world? She looks at him. And she goes, well, you know what? I don't know, but I think there's one less than you think. Financial security. <laughs> Someone's going to get that later on. <laughs> my passion is this is my passion is business. Okay, my passion is telling the youth of America what's available to them and let them exercise that, inspire them to do other businesses. The other passion I have is this: presenting information to people that are starting into businesses and allowing them to understand what's available to them so they can maximize their tax opportunities, they can maximize their estate planning, they can maximize the ability to keep their assets, period. Because how many of us know that at the end of the year when we get our audit, our little thing from the IRS that says we owe them, how many write checks to the IRS? That's it. You guys are fabulous. You already got half of them worked out. How many would like to have 50% more cash that you pay to the IRS? That's what this concept will do. These concepts are designed that you will get an average of 50% back or not have to pay up to 50% of the ones that you're already obligated to pay as you're structured now in the standard of what we present from the IRS. Um, next slide. Wealthy people, this is my favorite saying right now, it'll change. The wealthy people rarely do things more difficult than people that are poor. They do them differently. So exciting. You guys know that, right? How many of you guys are two percenters? Wow. Okay, how many understand what a two percenter is? Okay. How many know the law of averages? 20% of the work that you accomplish is I mean, 80% of the work you accomplish is done in 20% of the time. How many have heard that? Yeah. So we like to generally make sure we optimize our time because that gives us, if we could do 100% of it in 20% of the time, it gives us a lot of time to go goof off and do things that we really want to do, right? Passionate about. Well, 2% of the people in the United States control 98% of the money. And it's a simple little mathematic equation that you go out there, and that's a law of averages. 2% of any group of 100 are actually going to learn and do something with this information you'll get today. It's a law of averages. I can't change that. However, what I can do is inspire you guys to be beyond that 2%. If we had 100% of the 2%ers in this room, we could change the world. Now, so I'll quit that in a minute. As soon as it's not funny, right? <laughs> we did this one. We're going to do Ching the next one. Again, these are the concepts that are presented today. Um, I wasn't done. I did point, though. I'm sorry. So let's talk about assets. We're good. No, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. So you're asking me questions. No, no, just maybe in this case. I know. I tried to do that, but you know what? No, it, it, it's the position of the screen. There you go. That works. Is that better? Okay, yeah. Oh, that's way too much better. Yeah. Okay. okay. How's that? Perfect. <coughs> oh, that's terrific. <laughs> what are they? Assets are a resource with economic value 
that an individual corporation or country owns or controls with expectation will provide future value, future benefit. King. We'll do the next one. We're going to go to, um, these are some of the assets that we, we deal with um, individually as we sit. Personal properties, assets uh, can be, but it can be a liability. If you owe money on it, they're a liability. Financial property, um, that would be real estate, cars, uh, some other things that you know, um, uh, brokerage accounts. Um, title property, uh, again, if it's entitled to boats, entitled property, cars are entitled property, real estate is entitled property, uh, and businesses, which you guys, how many have their own business? How many are self proprietor, sole proprietor? How many LLCs? LPs? C Corps? S Corps? Wow, we got a lot to talk about. Next, thank you. Okay, attorneys. The cool things about these concepts is they do not require attorneys to implement. But again, I would put that screen up there. I do not give anybody advice not to go see an attorney. I always give them advice to go see an attorney to validate what they're doing with this kind of information. Because it's very, it's very important that they get comfortable with it. If you're comfortable with it, by having an attorney review it, do that, please. So, three things attorneys charge for is giving advice. Oh, that's the first thing. It was supposed to be number one. But actually, drafting forms is what they charge most for. So when they draft forms and they do all that kind of stuff, they're actually charging the maximum amount of money. And I don't mean to be, you know. Any advice for form review. Yeah, you you're, 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 your clicker's an attorney. <laughs> like who? Your clicker's an attorney, actually. I know, that's why I was... I got a nice email from Madan. He said, happy birthday. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. He was more than kind on his birthday salutation too, by the way. But he also said, hey, Mike, don't expect me to bail you out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I was so, I was so, you know, that was, it gave me a, a great feeling of credibility. Not. Nice. <laughs> the last time I'm sending a new <laughs> I am, so I can share that with um, lawsuits. We can move to the next slide, I think. Four areas of exposure that people have. First area is lawsuits. The um, United States constitutes 94% of the lawsuits of the world. Strange. Oh, wow. I don't know. Messed up. Probate and estate planning uh, is the act of passing what you do have, your assets, to heirs. If you're not protected through estate planning, it's all in a tax event, and you can lose a great majority, if not the majority, of all of your assets just because of probate and poor estate planning. Taxes, there's two kinds. There's capital gains taxes that affect you, and there's income taxes that affect you outside of probate. So we want to talk about all these things. For the average American, the income tax is their largest debt expense. Is that not insane? Well, those are questions that are rhetorical. I guess I should. But y'all go like this. <laughs> Next thing, you sir. How to prevent a law? Oh, lawsuits. When they present a lawsuit to you, they have to present a theory of liability, which means it says that this guy tripped and fell. He broke his leg on your toys that were in the, in the sidewalk. Theory is that if your toy wasn't there, he wouldn't have tripped and fell. So that's a, that's a legitimate theory. Now what they're doing is they're extending the theories to where you don't have to be guilty to be charged with anything. Just the theory is that, oh, by the way, if you have a lot of money, the theory is, is that I want some, some to see you. <laughs> so the theory of, uh, the theory, the law, uh, the theory of liability has been expanded in the United States in the past 25 years to include almost anything. So you just have to be, valid, uh, be aware of that. So we'll go to the next slide. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and believe it or not, guess what Rockefeller knows? Guess what um, the two percenters know? They don't own anything. They don't own anything. Their LLCs, their living trusts, their um, their, their uh, family family. Um, uh, trust their um, C corporations. They have many, many companies that own everything and take care of them because they're the general partner or they're the owner. 
or they're the CEO, or they're the uh, board of directors. That's how they do it. And what I'm going to teach you today, or show you, because the concept's not taught, is that you can do the same thing because everybody's available to the same structure. Okay, we'll go next. Probate. A serious problem with probate is that if you do not have a will, and if you do not have a way of transferring your assets to your children, to your whoever you want them to go to, everything goes through probate. What is probate? Legal distribution, legal distribution of your assets to your heirs upon your death as administered by the probate court. Who's the probate court? Next. Probate court is the government. Now, are they going to act expeditiously? <laughs> no. Next. They're going to take their time. Average probate is over two years for any type of estate that's, that has any value. It's, it's incredible. Are you comfortable letting the government control your assets after you die? That you can answer. Say no. No! no. Thank you very much. You guys are cool. Now we'll go to the next one. Um, probate. There's two ways to deal with probate uh, in this program. Um, and that's through a trust. You can assign all your, all your uh, assets, property to a trust. It would be called a living trust. These are as fully funded living trusts, and there's two kinds of trusts. There is how many have no? How many heard of land trust? How many have heard of um, living trusts? How many have heard of an insurance trust? How about um, how many have an IRA account? 401. These are all trusts. Okay, they're all a trust account that's set up for specific purposes. Most time they're named after their purpose that they're set up for. However, there's only two kinds of trust. There's a revo revocable trust, and there are irrevocable trusts. One is the fact that you can set it up, and you can manage everything in it without any troubles, uh, changing things, changing beneficiaries, changing items, changing titles. That can all be done with a revocable trust. With an irrevocable trust, they're set up. You can't change them outside specific limitations. So this is very important to understand. Yes, please, thank you, Madonna. You're doing such an awesome job. Everybody give me a hand. Taxes. Uh, let's, we're going to talk about a little bit of taxes. Capital gains. I'm just brushing over this stuff because we don't have a lot of time. And then I take time to tell you all that. Isn't that great? How much time do I have left? Four uh, minutes, he says. About okay, ten, ten, ten minutes or so. Capital <laughs> gains. The majority of all wealth created, this is a great statement, the majority of all wealth created is done through capital gains. They didn't do it with a job, they didn't do it with investing in other things, they said they, they did capital gains as the greatest wealth creator ever, ever in the history of the world. So it's important that you have to understand what capital gains taxes are and how to minimize capital gains taxes. Income taxes. Um, this is where we can make the most immediate impact because you guys are, most of us that start into a kind of business like this have a job. And setting up that job between your business, setting up your business can help you alleviate the majority of your tax liability through your job. So it's a great place to start, which you can increase your tax returns. Next, please. Thank you, sir. Capital gains. We already said that. Um, again, the wealthy do things differently. So what we want to look at is uh, they, uh, and the fact that they spend most of their time working on how to keep their money. We spend most of our time working on how to get it. They spend most of their time on working how to keep it. And there's a great transition that we should take our minds to is saying, okay, we were, you know, getting it, it's not that difficult. Once you start getting it, keeping it, that's the other question. How do we keep it next Capital gains without protection. One dollar doubled every day turns into one million dollars after how many days? Twenty-one days. In twenty-one days, if you have one dollar doubled every single day, you get to one million something forty-eight thousand dollars. This is if you just did it. Now, if you were to take a tax out at fifteen percent, the residual of that was seven hundred thirty-four thousand. So, just fifteen percent tax rate based on a twenty-one day income of one million dollars, you're only going to get three quarters of it. And trust me, you're not going to get that much 
because it's compounded through the interest. I thought it was a little bit too much to deal with right now. So basically, $580,000 is what you're going to take home if you earn a million dollars. Okay. So now we'll go to the next slide. Then we'll go to income taxes. It's the largest debt. Many ways to reduce the income tax liability. The best way to structure entities to protect, save, and build wealth. The American way, because that's only Rockefeller did it. Um, and all of the, they're, they're doing, the politicians are doing it now. The, um, everybody does it that has the two percenters. They all do it this way. Because what? They were born into the knowledge. You guys weren't born into the knowledge of what the two percenters have available to them. So either you either go out and search for it, or it gets presented to you. I'm giving it to you. There it is. Um, next, please. Essential tools. Basically, if we put these entities together for every single person in the room, you would be finding yourself in a major situation of, of you know, eliminating tax burdens, of setting up your state so that the properties can be transferred without probate, without probate, and without state taxes. And the first thing is a fully funded living trust. Believe it or not, 90% of the people that set up trusts, there's quite a few in the United States know how to set up a trust through an attorney, but the, what the attorney doesn't tell the folks that set these trusts up is that you have to fund them for them to be operable. So 90% of the people that set up trusts don't fund them. So when they die, none of the assets are in the trust, they have to go through probate. The only thing that saves you is by putting all your assets in the trust. That's called funding. So I just want to bring that to everybody's attention that if you put a trust together, you better fund it. Uh, C Corporation, the, the most advantageous tax break that you could ever bid is a business called C Corporation. They give all the tax benefits that, uh, uh, that, that they maximize your tax benefits on everything. Education, housing, um, insurances, everything. They give you the biggest tax breaks. Family limited partnerships, that's where you want to own all your property. You want, you want to make sure that you have, I think it's the next slide. Ah, family limited partnership, look at that. Um, set it up, it's very simple. Uh, I'm just going to go through it very quickly. Family limited partnerships, uh, you set it up, you get a little bam, you get to click the button. If you're a husband and wife, There we go. Husband and wife. One percent. Family partner is general partners. There's two partners in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a limited partnership. There's the general partner and there's limited partners. The general partners run the business. The limited partners don't say anything. They can't do anything, but they own the majority of the stock. Percentage of business in an LP. Limited partnership is you own know, percentages of it. So husband and wife go into this form of limited partnership. They are the general partners. 1% each value of the general partnership is owned by them. The next slide goes to limited partners. And we'll go to the next one. The husband and wife are going to now own 40%. They're going to split it down the middle. 49% uh, is owned by the husband, 49% is owned by the wife. You can change those any way you wish. They don't have to be these kind of percentages. The idea is that the general partners who are the husband and wife are running the business. The limited partners own all the stock, all the, all the percentage of the company, which they can put into a living trust. There's a lot of protection there. Next, we want to go to the assets divided, two kinds of assets, safe assets and high liability assets. You have to know how to structure your limited partnerships to, to accept a high, high limit. Uh, the safe assets are bank accounts, brokerage accounts, anything that has to do with finances, stuff that doesn't have entitlements or have any liability to outside lawsuits or inside lawsuits. The high liability assets are real estate, vehicles, home is the biggest high liability as, um, asset that you have. So you want to make sure that they're separate because if someone sues you for your, an accident that happened in your home, you don't want to lose your safe assets. So you separate them. It's just a quick little thing. Next, we'll go to three benefits to FLP. Income tax reduction, income tax spreading. It's taking the family income and distributing through, in, uh, through um, spreading to the other individuals a part of the living trust or a part of the family partnership. The state tax reduction and lawsuit protection. Now, two kinds of lawsuits. One that's outside is if I resulted from actions related to the entities. This is if there is a lawsuit that's not related to the entity, which means that um, you have two, you have yourself and you have an entity. 
the, the, if someone sues you, they can't touch your entity because it's outside the entity. If it's inside a lawsuit resulting from that, it means that inside that entity, someone sued you for sex discrimination or um, wrongful termination or something like that. So that's the two types. We're going to go to the next slide. Charging order, this is what saves most companies. Um, the charging order is a document that the United States courts established the fact that if you are sued and the plaintiff gets a judgment against you, and they decide that they think they can't re they cannot hit the button. They can't receive any of your assets. Next button is they cannot receive any of your distributions. The distributions are, as long as you don't distribute them, they are not available for the lawsuit plaintiff. It's a little bit drawn out, but that's a quick little thing on it. Um, which entity we predict, we have to ask ourselves questions. Cash flow, properties, how much equity in each property, state filing fees, where do we set up the, the accounts and why? Next. So, summary three entities, minimum to create a strong asset shield. And these are concepts. You want to get a family living partnership, C corporation, and then um, a revocable fully funded living trust. And those three items will make you um, take care of you pretty well. Um, this is. Uh, the corporation manages the businesses. This is what each one of them do. Tax reduction, tax dividends, family and partnership owns all the assets. Fully funded the local trust, does estate planning, employs probates, and collects and distributes assets to heirs. And then we're going to go to the next slide which says questions. Mercy. That was a lot of stuff. <laughs> so now, if I created a lot of questions inside of you, great. Because they have to be answered. And if you guys understand what's going on with this kind of stuff, here's a book. I don't share it with many people. It cost me $35,000. <laughs> but it's what I use to help people. I mean, this is, um, if you guys are familiar with most of the information that's around, um, it, uh, if you go to a seminar, you're going to get presented by Jane Minton or some other folks that do this asset protection plan. And these are the guys that set me up. So. The um, handbook is fantastic. It shows me how to do th certain things, how to structure concepts according to what your tailored needs are. And that's it. Thank you so much. You guys are great. Does anyone have any questions for Michael? We'll take two or three. <coughs> wow. Cool. Like right. that good, Michael? No, I don't think so. I think they're just so confused. Hi. Um, I set up a I'm not a, I'm not an attorney. I can't answer that question. I can talk to you and sit down and say, okay, yes, this is still protecting you, but I can't. I really, as an attorney, and your act is a very specifically, is a very specific question to an entity that's already in existence. So I can't answer a question like that. But what you I can be generic. Hand it over to Madonna. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's what he does for a business, though. Um, yeah, um, you know, the, the, the thing is that the, 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 the entities work together. You have to have them together. So if you don't have something else to work with it, it's probably a good idea to look at it. Okay. That's all I need to do. Thank you. Great. Cool. So